Do you want to learn how to build a digital business but don't know where to begin? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the things that you need to do in order to start selling a digital product online. So keep on watching this video. Hi, my name is Aurelius and on this channel, I make videos on how to start and grow a digital product business. So if that interests you, be sure to hit that subscribe button just below. Turn on notifications too, so you'll be the first to know of any relevant videos I post up here on this channel. All right, so you wanna build a digital business, but it seems like there's so many different tools and platforms and many of these technical aspects that uh, come into play and that's perhaps overwhelming you and you just don't know where to begin. Well, I was in the same stage and that's when I started back in 2006. I really didn't know where to begin and it was all based on trial and error. So what I wanna share with you in this video is how to get started and what sort of things you need to think about when you are starting a digital business. So the first thing you wanna make sure you have is a domain name. So what a domain name is, is basically a www.yourdomain.com, whatever it may be. And it all depends on your brand, your product or service that you're offering. If you are building your personal brand, then you wanna ensure that you register a domain name that's based around your name. So for me, it is aureliustigen.com. Yours may be John Smith. And if it is taken, one tip I can give you is to add, let's say your middle name. Uh, so let's say John S. Smith or something like that. But it is good for personal branding. You don't wanna name it anything else if you are trying to build your personal brand because down the road, if you do, let's say create some sort of other brand name, let's say digital marketing for newbies or something like that. But uh, the whole brand is based around yourself. And of course, uh, you know, you're the one who's uh, presenting all the material, the content and the products and services uh, that then becomes your personal brand. So in order to become an authority and be known for something and use your name in the marketplace, you wanna make sure that you use your name, which is why I highly recommend that you register a yourname.com instead. If you don't find a .com, you can perhaps use something else uh, some other extension. If you are doing a product base, of course, you wanna make sure that it's uh, based around your product that you wanna register your .com for. If it is around the tech industry or if you're creating some sort of SaaS or SaaS, then you can use something, an extension like a .io or something around that. Uh, you don't necessarily need a .com if you can't find a .com. Uh, the reason why many people suggest using a .com is uh, number one, obvious reasons. Uh, everyone knows what a .com is. And also, it's also good for in the eyes of Google and search engines, they tend to favor uh, the, you know, the algorithm favors a .com over something like a .name or something else, some other weird extension. And that's why people tend to stick with .com, .net or .org. All right, now comes the part where you need to think about web hosting, who is going to host your website because you need some storage online. And for that, you can look at options such as bluehost.com, or hostgator.com. These are basic shared hosting that you can join. If you are looking for something more robust, something with more specs and a dedicated server I'm uh, talking about or referring to, uh, you can look at services such as Storm On Demand or Storm, I think they call it now. Uh, these are more robust systems where it's dedicated just for your websites so that you're not interfered by other uh, users that are basically using that same server. I think there's like a hundred people that use that one server. So if traffic is a factor for you and if you really need all that bandwidth for yourself, and of course, if you are going to experience a product launch or uh, sorry, an influx, an influx of visitors coming to your site, then you wanna think about using a dedicated server instead of a shared uh, server or a shared hosting. Once you've registered a domain name, once you've gotten a web hosting, the next thing you need to think about is what platform you're going to use. And the most common is WordPress uh, because WordPress has a bunch of plugins that you can plug straight into uh, that system. 
to enhance it and to add all these extra features that you won't be able to do if you just have a plain HTML website. So WordPress is the go-to and what I use for pretty much like 95% of my websites. If you are going to go the route of not going WordPress, there are other options such as Squarespace and Wix. And if you are doing something like e-commerce, then you can think about using uh, Shopify. So if you are thinking about using some sort of built-in service that has that's an all-in-one system, then you don't need web hosting. Uh, but you are relying on their platform, so you're limited to using their features and their tools only. So that's just a caveat there. The next step after you've decided on what platform you're going to use is what you're going to do is think about what pages you're going to need on your website. If you are a, let's say a plumber, the basic pages that you're going to need is a main landing page or home page, And then next you wanna have an about page and perhaps a portfolio or a gallery of all the work that you've done. And uh, optionally, you can also have kind of like a customer feedback or testimonials page where you can show a list of all the customers and clients that you've worked with and share their feedback all on that one page. Another page you definitely need to have is a contact us page where you can have a contact form on there. Uh, some other mandatory, I guess, uh, pages that you're going to need are legal pages such as your privacy policy and your terms and conditions. Those are the two basic uh, pages that you need. And of course, if you have other things and depending on your location, you might need things like an FTC compliance and other uh, legal uh, requirements or legal pages. And sometimes if you do look at something like WordPress plugins, you'll be able to find a legal pages generator, which allows you to generate kind of like a standard template that you can use on your page so that you don't need to go out and get a custom legal page done for you. But with that said, uh, do seek legal advice and professional advice uh, based on your industry, your niche, and that's really custom to what you're offering. The next thing to consider, of course, is the design layout and the template that you're going to use for your website. And where I like to go for themes is to go to themeforest.net. And from there, you'll be able to find thousands of different templates that you can simply plug straight into your uh, WordPress site and make it look the way you want. With these plugins, you're able to make customizations uh, based on the colors that you want, the font style that you want, the text sizes, and all things like that. Okay, next, once you've kind of brainstormed and have an idea of what pages you want, or let's say you've already built them, the next thing is to, to consider is whether you're going to actually sell things on your site. And if you are going to sell things on your site, you, know, you may want to consider a shopping cart system or perhaps use a plugin such as WooCommerce, which is specifically for WordPress, which allows you to do, or allows your customers to do things like add to cart, so if you sell things like uh, merchandise or anything that requires things where customers need to add it to the basket, then you can use WooCommerce for that. It is free to use, but they do have an upgraded plan with extra features, so do consider that. Now, the next thing is whether you are going to capture email addresses on your site, and if you wanna build an email subscriber base so that you can follow up on your audience and your subscribers, and for that, you need to consider what email marketing platform you're going to go with. I do have some uh, videos on that just uh, above here. I'll link up a card on some platforms that you can consider based on your needs and your purpose. All right, next up, once you have your website ready, it's time to promote your website. You could have the most creative, most fanciest website out there, but if no one's going to see it, then you're never going to get those clients or make those sales. So a couple of tips here to share with you, and that is to simply get on social media. One of the first, your first thoughts is, you know, there are so many platforms, which one do I go on? The key here is to do a bit of research and that is one important factor is to know 
where your audience is spending most of their time. And you gotta understand the social plaf social media platform. If you are going to go on TikTok, then you need to understand the mind of a TikTok user. It's generally like 10 to kind of like 18 year olds that get on TikTok. But if you are a professional, let's say someone who is an accountant, you know, you may go to a different platform. If you're an accountant, I think a good platform for that is to go straight to LinkedIn, spend 80% of your time on there uh, versus trying to waste your time going on all platforms because there's so many platforms out there. And that's the way I used to think. I used to think I have to be everywhere. I have to, the more I'm um, more of a presence I have online, then I'll get attract more of an audience. But it's not the case because you're just diminishing your effort, your focus in making sure that you produce quality content, valuable content out there. So the two platforms that I focus on are YouTube and Instagram, and that's it. I used to think that I had to go on Facebook and uh, LinkedIn as well, but there is kind of a smart way to go about this in terms of content marketing you know that's another aspect of digital business but essentially what you want to do is create uh, one main you know content piece that's ideally a bit more lengthy let's say a 20 minute video or let's say you you write a a blog post that's long you can break this up and even convert it into many other smaller pieces to then post up on other social media platforms so that way you're leveraging on that one piece of content. But of course you do need time to do this. So instead of overwhelming yourself into getting into this type of thing and creating a system out of this, just focus on that one platform where your audience is hanging out most of their time. I like to use the 80-20 rule here where I'm spending 80% of my time on that one platform and then 20% on the remaining. So with that rule, you can kind of use that. So if your platform's LinkedIn, then spend 80% on LinkedIn and then 20% uh, amongst the other social media platforms. I could talk all day about digital business, but I think many of the things that I talked about in this video deserve its own video. I actually do have a few of these videos that cover some of these things like uh, landing pages, how to build one, and how to choose a right email marketing platform for you. I'll link up some resources below this video if you are interested in that. So that's all for this video. I really wanted to just kind of like touch on each of these things or aspects of setting up a digital business and not go into too much detail. Perhaps I'll say that for a future video where I'll go really deep and go step by step on how to actually like set up a website. So if that does interest you, uh, let me know in the comments field and I will plan that out for the future. So thanks a lot for watching this video. If you found it helpful, hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. So then you will actually get notifications if I do post anything relevant uh, on this channel. In the meantime, do stick around to watch these next relevant videos coming up. Stand up and make